So, hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we are going to look into this chapter called properties of wave. A wave is important because it is a tool that physicists use to explain the behavior of light, sound, electromagnetic radiation. Because apparently all these different theories, they are sort of related to wave. And one wave that we'll see in our day-to-day -day life is water wave. And they are also very useful in terms of helping us to understand how, how the behavior of waves is like because, you know, it's, it's very easy to observe them. So in order to observe water wave, there is this equipment called a ripple tank and they can be used to produce straight ripples and circular ripples. So how it works is that you have, you know, a shallow tank of water and this oscillating pedal, once you turn it on, it will just keep vibrating to create water wave, which you can observe. So how are ripples produced here? Ripples are produced by something vibrating ups and down. And what is happening here is that the vibrating bar is pushing the water molecules up and down. And when they push the water molecule, they also move their navels. So in the process, energy is transferred by the wave, but water molecule remain in the same place. So here is a very important thing here. A wave, they only transfer energy, but not metal. And in this case, the metal is the liquid. Water does not move. What moves is the energy. So here is some of the properties that you need to know in order to understand wave better. First is called the wavelength. So in a water wave, for instance, we are in this ocean, we'll see that this pattern, which the water will just rise up to the highest point and then go down and the highest point again. All right. And the wavelength represents the distance between two adjacent crests. Crest is this point. Crest is the highest point of a wave. So here we have one highest point and here we have another. So the distance between these two points is called the wavelength. The second term is, of course, what we have already done, the crest, the highest point, and the lower point, the lowest point on the other hand is called the trough. And the fourth is the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance between um, the normal, like let's say when the water is more moving, that's um, the lower normal point. And the amplitude is the distance between the normal point and also the crest or even the trough, okay? So that's wavelength and amplitude. So if you were to switch the graph into a displacement versus time graph instead, so in the previous example, we have displacement and also distance. But if the x axis were to change into time, here we have um, a few more definitions. First is called frequency, something that we already learned in the chapter sound. So frequency is the number of wave complete wave. So first of all, this is one complete wave, a sine graph. This is one complete wave. And frequency is the number of complete wave in one second. So in our example here, you can see that there's one complete wave and there's another one complete wave in one second. And as a result, you can say that the frequency of this wave is two hertz. On the other hand, the other definition that you need to know is called period the number of seconds it takes for each wave to pass a point, meaning how long does it take for one wave to pass? And in our example here, it will be 0 0.5. So the period of this graph, we can say is 0 0.5. So there is a relationship between frequency and period. So we can use the frequency to find out the period and vice versa. For instance, if first the C wave, if let's say, the frequency of the C wave is 1 over 10, you can simply find the period using this. So you're going to use 1 over 10 into frequency and then find the period. And period will be equal to 10, which is what we have here. And that's the same thing. If your frequency is 1000 hertz, you can find the frequency by, um, you can find the period by using this method. So period, period will be equal to 1 over 1000, which is what we have here. So that's how frequency and period relates with each other. And let's look into some of the important facts about wave is how fast they move. For ripples produced by the ripple tank or even in the ocean, 
as few centimeters per second, but it varies according to you know how big a wave is. Whereas sound wave, something we learned in chapter twelve, it, they travel in um three hundred and thirty meter per second, usually from three hundred and thirty to three hundred and fifty. Whereas light wave is the fastest, they travel in three times ten to the power of eight meter per second, meaning they can travel this amount of meter in just one second. So wave is a good model for us to understand how energy is transferred. The speed of wave is equivalent at which the wave transfers energy, how fast they can do it from place to place. The bigger the amplitude, the more energy it transfers. A wave, again, transfer energy without transferring matter. In our ripple tank example, it's only that the energy has moved but not the water molecules. So an example that I can give is called is the earthquake. Earthquake happen caused by transfer of energy by wave. So there are two types of wave in an earthquake. The first one is primary seismic wave. Also, the other one is secondary seismic wave. One is fast moving and the other one is slow moving. So that's um, the different types of wave that we have. We'll learn it. The first one is transverse wave and it looks like this. Whereas the other one is longitudinal wave. I believe this, all of you should be quite familiar with this because we have talked about it in chapter 12 sound. And the definition of the two waves are here. Just know that the, for transverse wave, it is a wave in which vibration is at the right angle to the direction of propagation. What does it mean? Direction of propagation is over here. So left and right, up and down. But then you can see that the wave will be moving to left and right. And the direction of propagation now will then be perpendicular to the direction of motion because I am giving the wave an up and down motion, but it's moving from left to right. So there is a perpendicular relationship. Whereas longitudinal wave, it is a wave in which vibration is forward and back parallel to the direction of propagation. Meaning I'm moving front and back and the direction which the wave moves is also left to right. So I'm moving left to right and also the direction moving in left to right. So it's parallel in other words. So that's what the definition means. And the example, some of the examples for transverse wave, ripple on water, like wave, they are also transverse. Basically uh, a combination of electricity and also magnetism. Secondary seismic wave is also a transverse wave, whereas longitudinal we have sound and primary seismic wave. So let's look into um, how we can calculate the speed of a wave using this formula. So you can find out the speed of a wave if you have the frequency and also the wavelength of the wave. So let's try to solve some question. An FM radio station broadcast signal of wavelength 1.5 meter and frequency of 200 million hertz. So what is their speed? Again, you can use the formula speed equal to frequency times wavelength. You just do 200 million, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 multiplied by 1.5. And if you were to put everything into the calculator, you would know that the answer that we get will be the speed of light, as simple as that. So the other work example is, um, they gave you the frequency of 1, 4,000 and they asked you for the wavelength, given that you know how fast the speed of sound moves. So again, I'm just going to use S equal to F lambda. Speed is 330. Frequency is 4,186 multiplied by lambda. And if you were to do this and plug this into your calculator, you should get the answer 0 0.079. And that will be the wavelength for the wave. So here we have another fact about speed of wave in different materials. When waves travel from one material into another, they usually change speed, just like um, the light wave. When it travels from a less dense to a denser medium, it will slow down. Okay, so that's um, here's some example. When the speed of the wave change, one thing that you need to remember, this is the key thing, the frequency will always remain unchanged. The frequency is determined by the source. Therefore, even if the speed change, the frequency will be the same. Then, but then according to our formula s equal to f lambda, when the speed changes, let's say the speed decreases and the frequency remains the same, it means that the lambda 
will have to go down. That's why you can see that as a wave travels from a less dense medium into a denser medium like glass, it gets narrower. As in the wavelength here, as compared to what we have here, the part, the wavelength in of wave inside the glass will be shorter because now they are moving slower. So that's something that you need to take a note of. Always remember frequency remain unchanged. So let's look into how to draw water ripples um, on a diagram like that. So this diagram shows an overview head of ripples. The line represents the top of the ripple and these lines are known as wave front. So wave front is the lines that you see and, and water wave. And just note that the distance between, so this is called, oops, this is called wave front wavefront and the distance between each wavefront will be the wavelength so this will be the wavelength so now they are saying how how can i know how can i draw the reflection of this ripple when it hits the boundary here and how you can do this remember that um for reflection to occur angle of incident equal to angle of reflection so i'm just going to show you how to draw this first of all you do need to use a ruler to create the normal line. So in my example here, so you can draw the normal perpendicular to the boundary, meaning you should have a 90 degree here. Okay, so that's the first step. You draw a normal line followed by the reflected ray. So do, this ray color line is important because that's sort of like the incident ray, but in terms of water, for um, our diagram here. So because we are drawing reflection, just know that so we need to know where's the what is the angle of incident. I don't have a protractor with me and it also wouldn't be very good to measure it on an iPad. So let's assume that this is 30. And for reflection to occur, simply make another reflection, reflected ray, oops, that has the same angle 30. So let's say this is also let me use another color. This is also 30. So once you draw out the um, reflected ray, you can start drawing the ripple, which is perpendicular to the red color line. Um, my diagram here is not very accurate um, because I'm not drawing on a piece of paper with a protractor, but just make sure that you are using a protractor. I mean, uh, yeah, a protractor when you are doing this because you need to measure what is the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. And if I were to show you the better diagram, so that's basically a better version of it, I draw beforehand. So you can see that the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of refraction. And that's how you draw reflection of ripples. Uh, let's look into another phenomenon, refraction of ripple. It happens when the speed of light or even the speed of wave change. So the following wavefront diagram show how the wavefront pattern change. So in order to do this, again, um, the same step as the last one, I'm going to draw a normal line. Okay, so I have a normal line here. And because this know that this is the incident angle, and now water wave is traveling from a less dense medium to a denser medium. And therefore, I need to draw my refracted ray um, towards the normal. And once I have that, I can draw the normal line. Okay. Yeah. So know that this will bend towards the normal. So this is what you will get when you draw out the refracted ray. So let's look at the complete answer, which I think is a lot better. And you can see that the water is bent towards the normal. Okay. So that's refraction. Let's look into another phenomenon that we have not talked about in the light and sound chapter called diffraction. When a wave spread out as it travels through a gap or past the edge of the object. So for diffraction, there are two phenomena. The first one is passing through a gap. Um, so just know that diffraction is greatest when the width of the gap is same as the wavelength of the wave. So the wavelength is this part, the distance between each wavefront. So you can see that in the second diagram, we have greater wavelength. Just know that 
um, refraction will be greatest when the gap here is equal to the wavelength. But in the physics scenario here, you can see that the wavelength is significantly smaller. So the diffraction, this is how you can draw it, a little bit curved. And since the diffraction doesn't change the wavelength, make sure you draw it in a way that the wavelength should be the same. So in our second example, it's a little bit different. My wavelength is longer, meaning it's, it's closer to the size of the gap. So when this is the case, I'm going to have a better diffraction effect, meaning it's now more curvy. So hopefully you can compare the two diagram. I'm going to show you the perfect version. So first of all, you have this diffraction effect, which is not very strong. Second is that when the wavelength increases and it looks and is closer to the size of the gap, you have a better diffraction effect. So um, that's the first phenomenon for diffraction. Another type of diffraction is this passing through an edge. So this one, when increasing the wavelength would increase the angle of diffraction. So let me first show you how the wave looks like. So when it passes through a gap like that, it will just look straight, but then bent a little bit. Okay, with a little tail. So that's what happened when water wave passed through an edge. But if you were to increase the wavelength, you're going to get a greater effect, diffraction effect. So meaning you're going to, your wave is going to curve a little bit more. So to show you the perfect version, that's, that's it. Increasing the wavelength increases the diffraction. So here are some of the real life example of diffraction. Um, let's say this person, the one with red color shit, is speaking to a person. So we know that there's sound wave here. And the reason why the second person can hear her is because the sound wave is diffracted. That's why this guy here can hear what is being told. Okay, so even though they cannot see each other, they can hear each other because of diffraction. The second thing is like, like wave, they travel through very tiny gap, you know, after rain. So this is why you see that like is spread out here, um, which is called the halo effect after rain is over. So that's some example and application of diffractions. So let's look into some passive question. What, the following table shows some example of wave, which row correctly lists the nature of each wave. Sound wave, we know that it is a longitudinal wave, so the A and D is incorrect. Infrared wave is an electromagnetic wave, which we'll talk about later. It is a transverse wave. Red light wave is also a transverse wave. So I know that my answer is B. Great, so let's look into another question. Water waves travel from deeper water to more shallow water. This causes them to refract. Which wave property remain the same? Remember, when what wave travel from one place to the an another, its speed might change, its wavelength might change. The only thing that doesn't change is the frequency. So the answer is B. Last but not um the question, state the meaning of monochromatic green light. Um, in the last chapter, we have learned about it. It's basically like a single frequency, okay? Like a laser light which, that has only one color. The last question, a clock is illuminated by monochromatic green light. This green light has a wavelength of this um, number, calculated frequency. So we know that light travels in a speed of three times 10 to the power of eight meter per second. So we have speed and wavelength to calculate frequency, I just use the formula that we learned, S equal to F lambda, 3 times 10 to the power of 8, frequency 5.6 times 10 to the power of negative 7. So if I were to make F the subject, um, it's going to be like that, 10 to the power of negative 7. And my answer, you should get this answer if you key in everything into the calculator. And that's all about this chapter. Um, in this chapter, we learn about the different properties of wave and what are the different types of wave. We also learn a formula that can calculate the speed of the wave. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next.